Hey guys, don't mind the mess over here. Just wrapped up and wanted to give a little demo on what I got going on here. Um, when I bought my house, uh, this garage had a standard uh, garage door track that, you know, spanned the center of the garage door up till, you know, somewhere here-ish. And I wanted to make room for a lift, um, which I ended up doing. So I had to, I had to bump the collar ties up and I also had to get rid of the garage door opener because the a car would hit it. So I, I still wanted to, to be able to use uh, some kind of opener. Um, I was I was doing it by hand for a while, but I just kind of figured I'd see what I could do. Um, I happened to have a couple lift motors kicking around, one from this house, one from my last one. Um, this one unfortunately didn't survive. I, I don't know what I did. I fried something on it. Uh, it would it would open, but not but not close. So. May it rust in pieces. Um, so I'll just kind of show you what I did here. Um, this is your standard Chamberlain Liftmaster Professional one third horsepower. You know, not a not a big torquey um, torquey thing. It's just professional, but I I don't know. Uh, so anyway, um, I got it fastened here pretty well. Um, got a piece of uh, eighth angle iron, kind of keeping it in place. Um, one of the problems I had uh, was keeping the tension on the chain. Um, I had uh, I made a slotted hole here so I could uh, set the chain to where I wanted to and just kind of tighten that one in place. That would tension it, and then I could fasten that one and you know get this guy hooked up and then that brace up there. Uh, but that still wasn't tight enough, so I had to cut another little piece of uh, angle here. And I, I made a uh, type of tensioner. Um, this is just a regular six by 100 volt. I think it's like a grade five. It's not even a, you know, a real honky one. And there's a, there's a nut inside here. So as you turn the bolt, it pulls the motor down and we'll tighten the chain. And now we keep it, it's, it's nice and tight. So it works just fine. Um, I will give you a demo on it, but I did want to show you a couple of things first. I basically took off the original sprocket that came off this. It, it looks like a bike chain. Um, and the reason I didn't use it is um, that I didn't have another sprocket that I could run the same chain around. So I ended up using um, a timing chain set off of a uh, Ford Explorer, the early 90s vintage. And um, this actually worked out well for me because this is a two to one gear reduction. All, all timing chains are a two to one gear reduction camshaft spins half speed of the crankshaft so that's a that came off the crankshaft of the explorer and that's the camshaft and i just i welded them in place um this one the welds don't look good because one i'm not very good at welding and uh two i had to cut the welds off the old motor in order to get it to fit on this one so it just looks a little shoddy um in the back i'm not sure if you can see but but back um Back in here, um, I did have some, I put in some set screws. Uh, there's three on the back of the pulley. Um, I'm sorry, the sprocket. So um, I wanted to be able to eliminate as much run out as I could on the on the sprocket because I didn't want to keep throwing the chain. Um, seems to work. It's not perfect, but um, it spins true enough to keep the chain on. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, if you guys ever want to do this, is I had an issue where um, if I open the door, not all the way, but let's say six out of the seven feet, um, the door would wanna would wanna stay open uh, instead of always constantly trying to trying to pull down. So uh, if I use the motor to bring the door up uh, most of the way and then stop it, and then try to bring it back down because the door would wanna stay in place, uh, the motor was uh, when I set it to go down these cables will just uh, come off the drum. And I spent about two hours the other day trying to get everything back in place. So all I did was I took about um, a quarter turns worth of tension off of the spools or the drums or whatever the heck they're called. And that seemed to solve it. Now I can open the door as much as I want or as little as I want and it does not come off the track. So I'll give you guys a little demo. It's, I still, you know, plugged into an outlet. It isn't permanently wired, but but it works. And this is my door switch. Going up. Got the limit switches all dialed in. 
all the way open. And then let's go back and good enough shuts just fine and I hope I can inspire someone any questions let me know